In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we remember Lucille and Melvin Noe, and all of the faithful departed today on All Souls Day, so the companion to All Saints Day. Yesterday we remember all the saints in heaven to be inspired by their witness. Today we pray in, in um, uh, sympathy, but really in connection, in, in communion with the suffering souls in purgatory, uh, the souls we can benefit, especially with our prayers. So let us call to mind the grace that the Lord gives to us, and especially to express sorrow for our sins, we ask the Lord for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, and as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened, so may our hope of resurrection for your departed servants also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And the, uh, today is a little different because there really are no one set of assigned readings. There's a whole series of options, so I'm not sure the missalette's going to be much help to you today. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. Judas, the ruler of Israel, took up a collection among all his soldiers amounting to 2,000 silver drachmas, which he sent to Jerusalem to provide for an expiatory service, sacrifice. In doing this, he acted in a very excellent and noble way, inasmuch as he had had the resurrection in view. For if he were not expecting the fallen to rise again, it would not have been superfluous and foolish to pray for the dead. But if he did this with a view to the splendid reward that awaits those who had gone to rest in godliness, it was a holy and pious thought. Thus he made atonement for the dead that they might be absolved from their sin. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Out of the depths I call to you, Lord. Lord, hear my cry. May your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, keep account of sins, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, so you are revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and I hope for his word. My soul looks for the Lord more than the sentinels for the daybreak. For with the Lord is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. For he will redeem Israel from all its sins. The second reading is from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
According to Luke. When the soldiers came to the place called the Skull, they crucified Jesus and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other man, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So when we talk about all souls, we remember the souls in purgatory, and it reminds us of the teaching about purgatory, uh, that for those that have died in a state of grace, but not yet in a state of perfection, there is a time of purification. So, in, and purgatory is that time of purification. Um, to to uh, learn from the lessons that we have today from these readings, um, I'll just point out uh, three important lessons. Uh, one, St. Paul reminds us of the glory that is ahead of us. That, that uh, earthly dwelling, that tent, is to be destroyed. This is not where we ultimately are destined to be here on earth, but instead we are destined for that building that is made from God, that heavenly temple, a dwelling not made with hands eternal in heaven. And when we compare that to this, we can really imagine just how far above earthly things the heavenly things are. So in heaven, everything is uh, filled with such a state of perfection. I think sometimes we realize then, if we're honest with ourselves, how we fall short of perfection. And of course, every defect that is there will stand out in the bright light of heaven. So that's why purgatory itself is actually a sign of God's mercy, that he gives us a place where even after death, if we have not yet been sufficiently purified, that in fact we can be purified so as to enter without any shame or without any reservation into the pure glory of heaven. So that's the first lesson, is that uh, this in fact is a sign of God's mercy that he gives us the opportunity to be purified in purgatory. The second lesson, from the gospel, Jesus speaks to the thief that is on his right, the thief that has professed the faith, the thief who has repented of his sin, the thief who is suffering uh, the punishment for his sin, Jesus tells him, today you will be with me in paradise. So the second lesson is that while purgatory is a, a place that the Lord gives us in his mercy to be purified, you don't have to go there. You don't have to go to purgatory. You can go directly to heaven if, in fact, you live a life of perfection. Or as we do penance for our sins, penance is a way we can say of paying that debt of our sin here on earth, and it's much better for us to do it here below than to do, to do that in purgatory. So with penance, with mortification, with striving for perfection in this life, always with the help of God's grace, it is in fact possible for us to pass directly into heaven, and that in fact is a good thing. We should strive for that level of heroic virtue, um, not settling for the minimum here below, but in fact really trying to live to the greatest extent possible that life of holiness so as to be able to pass directly to the presence of the Lord when he calls us home. So yes, purgatory is a sign of the Lord's mercy, that he gives us that opportunity, but in fact the Lord gives us the opportunity to bypass purgatory um, by living lives of great and heroic holiness. Third lesson, the first reading that we hear from the book of Maccabees, we hear about a group of people who recognize the different soldiers who had died in sin, and they send for a sacrifice to be offered in Jerusalem. They pray for the dead. They offer up a sacrifice for the dead. And this is, in fact, a great act of mercy for us. We too can pray for the dead. So for the souls in purgatory, so do they have to continue suffering? No, because we can help them. We can help them with our prayers, with our sacrifices offered up on their behalf, even with masses that are offered. Uh, for them and, and uh, for the purification of their souls. 
So that is another great act of charity in which we can be united with the poor souls by our prayers, by our works, by our offerings, so as to speed their path onto heaven. So those three lessons, I think these are three great takeaways from uh, the time of, of uh, All Souls Day. Sometimes uh, people who are not Catholic think purgatory, that's so negative. No, remember it's a sign of the Lord's mercy that he gives it to us. You don't have to go to purgatory. We live lives of great holiness and purification. And third, we can help the dead who have gone before us by offering our prayers and our sacrifices for them. Three great lessons to remember on this All Souls Day. Let us stand to present our prayers and petitions. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church and for the holy people of God, that we might in be inspired by the example of the saints and uh, the gospel to live the life to which the Lord calls us with great intensity. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for those who suffer for the faith, uh, that offering up their crosses that they must bear, uh, that they might grow themselves in holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, for the sick and the suffering, for those who are in need of God's uh, healing and his grace, for those who are infected, for the end of the spread of disease, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for the, the poor, for those who are in need, for those who are assisted by our generosity, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all the faithful departed, especially the deceased members of the Noe family for whom this Mass is offered, uh, and for all the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Let us pray for the protection of our religious liberties, for the freedom of the church, for peace and tranquility in this election season. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who roam throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the cause of your church. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servants may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful, Lord, life is changed, not ended. 
And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and Louis's assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, and have peace. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your departed servants, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The, uh, there are special indulgences that can be offered up for the faithful departed, especially throughout the first week of November, uh, for any visit to a cemetery, as well as for other, just the other normal things for which people can also obtain a plenary indulgence. So you can find out more online, so there are plenty of resources about that. Three easy lessons to take with you on this day to celebrate this negative thing about purgatory. Isn't purgatory awful? No, no, no. It's a sign of God's mercy. We don't have to go there, and we can help the faithful departed uh, through our prayers. So take those three things with you. Great lessons for today's, uh, today's uh, commemoration. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.